Everybody say faith and joy. Now, it's important that we know how faith works because without faith, you can't please God. So you, you want to know something about faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, you can't please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And so the righteous shall live by faith. God said three different times over in Romans, Galatians, Hebrews, man, uh, the righteous shall live by faith. So you got to live by faith. You don't have an option. It's not an option. You got to live by faith. So you want to learn something about faith. Faith affects every area of our life. And though faith works the same in every area, you have to develop it in every area. So we're developing our joy walk on Wednesday nights. Amen. And uh, talking about joy and uh, faith and joy. We're going to talk about some good medicine tonight. Joy is medicine. Hallelujah. I just keep seeing more and more. I mean, uh, I keep thinking, man, Lord, okay, we need to move on to something else. But, but, uh, but there's just several things in here that we need to get to. So this is what the Holy Spirit's emphasizing to us. You have to keep in mind, uh, what kind of people get results? Anybody know? Who gets results? Doers of the word. Doers. The doer. Everybody say, I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the word. Not just a hearer. I'm a doer. So you want to focus on, uh, on, on doing what you're hearing. And so that means if you have to make a little attitude adjustment, well, you just make the adjustment. All right. Nehemiah 8.10. Let's look at it. We've been looking at this. Then he said to them, go eat the fat. Drink the sweet, send portions to him who has nothing prepared, for this day is holy to the Lord. Do not be grieved. Uh, other translations say sorrowful or don't have sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, they, were at, they, they had been uh, outstanding all day listening to the word, and the priests uh, were teaching the people what God's word had said, and they realized they hadn't been doing the word, and so they were, they were, they were sorrowful. They were grieved because they, had, uh, they hadn't been doing what the Lord wanted them to do. And so now that they've heard the word, uh, the message from the Lord is, don't be grieved, don't sorrow, don't be sorrowful, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. So that's why we're talking about joy. Remember, Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So one of the things that uh, when Jesus said the kingdom is at hand, or one of the things, because we are citizens of the kingdom, we have uh, joy should be a regular part of our life, just like peace. What's interesting is we've talked about it in, our, in this series. Uh, we've talked about uh, uh, joy and peace in connection with faith. Romans uh, 15, 13 says, May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So when you decide to believe, a characteristic uh, evidence that you are in faith is that you've got some joy. And we're going to find out tonight, joy, if you're in joy, if you are joyful, it's going to manifest on your face. Now, I'm not saying that you just all bubbling around, <laughs> you know, but, but you're just, you, you got joy. And joy is noticeable. It's, it, you know, in other words, there's a difference between somebody that you can tell is doing good, they're having a good day, versus somebody that wants you to know they're having a bad day. Or they're sagging and they're dragging and, and so forth. And so... Uh, you know, and so you have to understand joy is a force. Joy is a force, and joy will strengthen the weak parts of your being. There's joy is very, uh, uh, it's just part of who God is. Uh, and so you have to understand if anything, uh, anything that can steal your joy is going to rob you of your faith. So um, that's why the enemy works real hard at trying to steal your joy. Because if he can steal your joy, he's going to rob your faith. And if he robs your faith, uh, you're not going to have any joy because joy is a manifestation that you are in faith. And so sometimes we allow circumstances, we allow things, we allow what somebody said, or we allow this circumstance that just arose to rob us of our joy, which means you got robbed of your faith. In other words, somebody gets, a, somebody gets some report and all of a sudden it's like they just, they just got hit in the stomach or something. Or, or, you know, all of a sudden it just blew their whole day out. Well, that means you just lost your faith. You just got out of faith. And, and, and you're not giving God anything to work with. You follow what I'm saying? And so it's a force. And, and, and specifically, joy will strengthen you. It strength, we're going to find out it strengthens our heart. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the stronger your faith, the harder you are to depress. See, the enemy wants you to be depressed. He wants you to get down. He wants you sagging and he wants you dragging. But, but the stronger your faith, 
the harder you are to, to depress. You, the harder, harder it is. You, you have to make up your mind, devil, you ain't stealing my joy. Because you have a lot, of, a lot of wonderful opportunities. James says, count it all joy when you're going through a test or trial. That obviously means if, you're, if you don't count it joy and decide I'm going to rejoice because it's not based on how I feel, if you don't count it joy, you, you're going you gonna to get your joy stolen. You say, well, I, I just don't feel like rejoicing. Well, again, these things aren't based on how we feel. We've talked about that. But specifically tonight, um, joy, when God says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, and you're going you're gonna to see this because you, I believe we all kind of have an understanding of it. But, but there's healing and restoration in joy. So why would the enemy be real interested in taking away your joy? Because there's healing in joy. There's restoration. Enjoy when you, in other words, you know, you just believe in that, that tomorrow is going to be better. You know, if, you, if today wasn't that great, if you don't believe tomorrow is going to be any better, you're going to have a hard time getting happy about it. Again, uh, somebody that has some vision and faith is going to have some joy. All right. So joy is good medicine. Think about it. What if, uh, uh, what if you had weak kidneys? What if you had a, a weak heart or if your joints are weak? If joy, and we're going to see joy can strengthen your heart, how about strengthening kidneys? How about strengthening uh, weak joints? How about, uh, you know, joy is just going to affect every part of your body. And we're going to see that it does because, again, you've got to keep in mind it's a force. Now, let's go on over to uh, Proverbs. I, got, I just got three verses and a lot of translations for you to think about tonight. Proverbs chapter 12. Verse 25, Proverbs 12, verse 25, the New American Standard says, anxiety in a man's heart. Now, has anybody ever had any anxiety? Or just everybody say anxious. You know, if you're getting anxious about something, anxiety, it's not something you're supposed to carry around. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. Now, again, when he's talking about your heart, that's, your, that, there's a, there's, that's a spirit, your spirit man. So, anxiety in your heart, uh, you, could, you, could, you could say worry. Worry and has to do with anxiety. It, 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 beca- it can become a, a mental issue. So, anxiety in a, in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. How many of you know that, um, now, as believers, we were talking a while ago, we're, we're supposed to encourage one another. The Bible says we're to come together all the more as we see the day draw near. We're to encourage one another because how many of you know how important it is to get some encouragement? Everybody needs encouragement. Somebody said encouragement is the oxygen of the soul. So, you know, if you ever uh, run into somebody and you were just doing really good and maybe you thought they were really spiritual, maybe you thought they were more spiritual than you and uh, they just kind of threw a, a wet rag on your parade. I mean, you were having a decent day, you know, going along, and all of a sudden, somebody just threw a wet rag on your parade. And, and well, that, that didn't really encourage you. If it discouraged you, then what happens is if you allow that discouragement, it can, what, weigh your heart down. Notice what he said here. He said it weighs it down, but a good word. Notice, you know a good word can help somebody? What does it do? It's like pumping some air in there, in their heart. It encourages uh, listen to Young's translation. Young's literal says, sorrow in the heart of a man uh, bows, bows it down. Boweth down. Sorrow in the heart of man bows it down. And a good word makes him glad. Just a good word. Good word. Wh- where does a good word go? Words go into, into, our, our, into our spirit man. You know, that you've heard that, that you know, little phrase, sticks and stones break my bones, words that never hurt me. That's totally untrue. Uh, and what you let, what you let it in. But but there's encouraging words, and so these are things that uh, he's talking about. What's going on in a person's heart? A good word makes him glad. So anxiety and sorrow, if you think about it, uh, can kill things in you. If it's weighing you down, if it's burdening you down, it can weaken your Im- your immune system to where you can't fight things off. If you allow anxiety. And sorrow, we've already seen the New Testament says sorrow brings forth death. Uh, as a matter of fact, sorrow is so important 
that translators decided in Isaiah 53, instead of calling sorrow, uh, uh, griefs and sorrows, it calls it sickness and pains. The Hebrew words are actually sickness and pain, but they translated it sorrows and griefs. So think about that. You know, sometimes people can allow these things to really affect them to a point of they're sick. I mean, that's how closely related they are. So anxiety and sorrow can basically uh, start working on you physically, weaken your immune system. See, a strong body and immune system can help you, and you not even know about it. God already put a healing immune system. I mean, we, our bodies were created. We got, we got resp respiratory systems. We got uh, dig digestive systems. We got all kinds of systems. And God's naturally put a healing uh, element in us uh, to recover. Healing means just a state of recovery. But sorrow can weaken you. You know, if, if people that stay depressed, usually if you know somebody that, that gets depressed a lot or they're depressed a lot, they get sicker a lot. Because that's just, that's just the way it works. It can weaken you. Sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. That's not going to help you. No joy, no peace. It's, it's making you weaker. And people allow that to take place. And month after month, uh, if you allow that type of... Uh, you know, just that weightiness in your heart is going to weigh you down. It's, it's not going to help you. It, you can be destroyed. So what do you do if you need some strength? Anybody know? What do you do if you need some strength? Well, you've got to get some joy. We can access joy. As a believer, we can access joy. All right? And in that joy is what? There's strength. So it's up to us to be happy. It's up to us to be joyful. We've already seen that. Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Why? Because it's good medicine for you. Amen. Look at, look at uh, the 15th chapter. Go over to the 15th chapter. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. Now let's look at this. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A joyful heart makes a cheerful face. What does a joyful heart do for you? Makes a cheerful face. But when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. So a joyful heart makes a cheerful face. That means this, whatever's going on on the inside is going to affect your face. All right? That means, you know, if you're grouchy all the time, you do not have joy in your heart. You might have Jesus in your heart, but you're not letting him out. Just run around, you know. Even sometimes people think they're real spiritual, you know, and, and that they're, you know, carrying the burdens of the Lord. And, you know, I've heard it like this. You, most of the believer's life, should be spent enjoying, because that's what the Bible says, he came to give us life and life abundantly, and that he gives us all things to richly enjoy. We should enjoy, we should enjoy the Christian life. The, the, the Christian life is, is not just sad and dragging, and we're carrying this oppress and oppression and, and this burden, you know, because the world's dying and going to hell. And, and you know, no, no. You should, when you, you should do the word, let your light shine, and enjoy life. That's the, that's, that's the way it should be. And, of course, the more involved you are in doing the things of God, doing what he's called you to do, the more faithful you are, the more blessed you're going to be. Amen. And, um, and, and healthy, too. Because the joy, notice he said a joyful heart. How can you have a joyful heart? Well, if you heard us a few weeks ago, because you, you make a decision to. It's a choice. Again, you've got to keep in mind what's on the inside is going to affect the outside. If it'll affect your face, but here's the key. If it, think about it. He said a joyful heart makes a cheerful countenance. I'll give you a few other uh, translations here in just a minute. But if it'll affect your face, it'll affect your kidneys too. If it'll affect your face, it'll affect your lungs. It'll affect, it'll, uh, affect your blood. It'll affect your whole body. It'll affect your emotions. It'll affect your mind. Because everything's all connected. I mean, you know, they even say, you know, a lot of medical, uh, medical play, they, they have people just run around, you know, trying to make people laugh in hospitals. Because they got enough Debbie Downers, especially they got a whole family of Downers hanging around, they need somebody to help them out. You know, or watch some funny movies. Why? Because it's medicinal. It's supposed to, it, it actually helps a person. It's good to laugh. That's why Job said, at destruction and famine, I'll laugh. You, 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 gotta, you gotta just go ahead and laugh. Think about this. You know, laughing is not that different or the, uh, you know, somebody that's uh, crying 
moaning, crying, worried, you know, you know, ha, 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 ha. you know, you can change that ha, ha, to a ha, 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 ha. You say, how you know? Been there. I mean, you're looking at your situation and you're like, ha, 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 and then all of a sudden you're like, ha, 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 and you laugh. And it's just a little adjustment that you make in there. You just decide, you know what? You, you stranded on the side of the road with a flat tire and a, and a car full of kids like I was at one time. It actually, it wasn't a flat tire. The engine was messed up. On the side of the road, and you can go, ha, 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 you know, it's hot. Or you can start going, ha, 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 ha. And the Lord's always good. You know, I, I was, uh, some, I don't know if I've ever even told this story. We were on our way to visit Donna's parents one time. The kids, uh, we, uh, this was, uh, I don't think Benjamin, Benjamin was, uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't on the planet yet. Uh, but we had Bracken and Jessica. Because we were actually, we were living up in, uh, we were living in Wheeler, Texas. And so we were taking a few days and we were going to visit my, my in-laws. And so uh, while we're, we were, we were somewhere around Childress, I think. And, uh, and the Lord is so good, you know. Uh, when the, the car overheated, and it just so happened when we came to a place to stop, it was, uh, number one, it was really hot, because Childress can get hot, you know. It was summertime, I think. And, and so... Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna pull over because the car's hot, thank God for an overpass. And we pulled right up under an overpass. And and you know while we uh, we were there, I mean it wasn't long. We didn't uh, really know you know what, what we we're gonna do. We just went over and pulled the hood up. And, but you know this elderly couple stopped. They lived there. This elderly couple stopped and pulled over and and uh, and just helped us. Took us. Ended up taking us. Elderly couple took us to their home. Uh, and uh, and. Gave us a place to stay, and then Donna's parents ended up coming, and we got all the situation worked out. But, but uh, we ended up staying in their home for a few hours till till he, till the cavalry arrived. Um, but you know, it's amazing how God uh, when God will take care of you in any situation like that. But just send somebody. I mean, you know, we we could, there could have been a bunch of people, you know, that just passed by, all, you know, whatever. But this elder, they knew. I mean, it's just perfect, you know. And God's always come through like that, and so. Uh, I just said, sometimes when you're going through a difficult situation, start, start just rejoicing, thanking God. He's working out the details because he's good. Amen. And, uh, and you have to remember, uh, sometimes we, we this, this is really being spiritual. We talked about that. Being, this is being spiritual. This is how, how we're supposed to react. And what's on the outside is a reflection of the inside. Look at, uh, this is Young's translation. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A joyful heart maketh glad the face. You can walk into work tomorrow and tell who's got joy in their heart. Makes glad the face. Now notice, and by grief of heart is the spirit smitten. Grief in the heart. So think about it. Joy brings you up. Anxiety, grief, sorrow, that brings you down. Joy in the heart. Makes glad the face. Uh, go over to the 17th chapter. Let's look at another one. Proverbs 17. Proverbs, anybody like joy? It's a choice. And it's going to affect, now think about this now. The power of joy, the force of joy, you making sure that you're just deciding, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna have, I'm, I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy, will affect you physically. Everybody say Physically. That means your organs, inside of you, your heart, your face. It'll, it'll affect your whole body. Proverbs 17, verse 22, Young's translation says, A rejoicing heart doth good to what? So you could just say it like this. You think if you just decided, I'm going to praise the Lord in this situation. You think that's going to do, think a rejoicing heart, again, that's going to, that's going to, a rejoicing heart is going to get involved with you just probably praising the Lord. Counting it all joy. I'm just going to rejoice. And we've talked about the importance of that already. But a rejoicing heart doth good to the body and a, sp and a smitten spirit drieth the bones. Drieth the bone. A smitten spirit. Well, can your spirit be smitten? Or can, well, it's because you let the anxiety. You decide to stay depressed about your situation. You decide, well, uh, you know, uh, I just... Feel like having a pity party. My life and my this and my that and, and, and nobody cares. And 
Where's God? And, and if you're not careful, uh, you stay in that condition, and it, and it starts working the opposite effect on you, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's drying you up versus building you up. Hallelujah. The New American Standard says, A joyful heart is good medicine. I think King James says the, a joyful heart is like a good medicine, but it's not like it is. It, it is. Notice that verse. Is a good medicine. Everybody say medicine. Now how many of you know, how many of you, if you got sick, and you go to the doctor, maybe you got a flu or something, and, and they're going to give you some medicine, right? How many of you going to take your medicine? How many would be a fool if you didn't take your medicine? If you went to the doctor, paid the money to go see the doctor, and then you paid the money for the prescription, and then you went home and you didn't take the medicine. God says, he said, a joyful heart is like, is like is, is good medicine. So we're talking about something that affects you physically. So, you know, when maybe the flu, somebody, you know, says, well, the flu's going around, say, no, but joy's going around too. And joy is good medicine. And it's cheaper than some of that stuff you got to buy. It's cheaper than a flu shot. Heard somebody got the flu shot the other day and died. Went and got a flu shot and died. You know, getting ready. Anyway. But think about it. He said it's a good medicine. Listen to this. Uh, another translation says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. A cheerful heart. A cheerful heart. It's good medicine. That's why you got to just, just stay up. It's, it'll, it'll make you feel better. Besides that, God's going to work it all out anyway. You say, hey, devil. God's working it all out. I'm releasing my faith. Another translation says, a joyful heart, I like this, works an excellent cure. I like that. A joyful heart works an excellent cure. So when we're talking about medicine, think about it. He said, a, a, this, he's talking about a joyful heart or a cheerful heart. Uh, I like this one. A cheerful heart makes a quick recovery. Well, how I many know if you, you, you know if you had some type of surgery or if you're coming out of something or you're needing to recover, what's the best thing for a quick recovery? Get happy. Get some joy. How do you do that? Well, get in the Word and just act on the Word. Believe the Word. Just decide, I'm, gonna get, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be joyful about this. I'm going to have some joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I got joy. It's the fruit of the Spirit on the inside. And he said it's a medicine. Now think again, joy is medicinal. Now remember, you know Proverbs 4, 19. 20 says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ears unto my sayings. I'll not depart from your sight, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and what? Health to all their flesh. So he's talking about the word is medicine. The word is medicine. So there must be joy connected to the word. Well, there is joy connected to the word because it's called faith. When you believe the word and decide, I'm going to act on the word, well, again, the manifestation of the fact that you're in faith is you've got joy. Let me go back to the story. I've told it many times, but I'll tell it to you again because some, not everybody hears it. But, you know, I was in a real difficult time going to Rama, been believing to get on Federal Express for over a year. Uh, you know, got three kids, barely making it, barely making it. Uh, you know, God's supplying. I mean, living the best we'd ever live, but, but just no, just, just lean, you know, just not a lot of extra. Uh, you know, giving groceries, you know, and sowing seed and different things like that. And, uh, but I was trying to get this job, and long story short, I went in, finally got this job after a year, and uh, second day on the job, they let me go, because I had too many tickets on my driving record. It was a, it was a driver's job for Federal Express, and uh, anyway, so, you know, I was really, I was discouraged. Number one, God, the Holy Spirit told me six months before I was going to get that job, so now I'm trying to figure out what's going on, so I, I was, uh, you know, I was discouraged. Uh, I, I, was, I was lower than a snake belly in a, in a wagon rut, you know? I mean, it was pretty low, and uh, pretty low. I was feeling down. I mean, you know, you trying to figure this thing out, and uh, and so uh, you know, in the midst of all that, trying to figure it all out. What am I going to do now? And and of course, God had already been. You know, we. I mean, I was only making like five fifty an hour. I mean, so I wasn't making enough to what I was making to survive anyway. You know, so we we're already living supernaturally, so it's kind of like I'm trying to, you know, I, I was finally getting this big breakthrough, so what's going on? So you've heard me say it, so I went to talk to Brother Keith, who's uh, one of my instructors at Rama. So we went in, sat, got into his office, and sat down, and I started telling the story, and he just looked at me and said, well, uh, he said, he said uh, who's your source? 
you know, after I went through this really sad story, stretched it out, you know, I'm milking it, you know. <laughs> it's rough. And he just, he just, you know, smiled and said, well, who's your source? <laughs> well, like I said, at that point, you got one or two, one out of two options. You can stay the same. You can stay uh, upset, discouraged, or you can flip the switch and say, well, God's my source. And think, just, th- just do a quick think, how, how, how have you been making it? Well, God. And how are you going to continue to make it? Well, God. And how have you been doing it all these years? God. Because why? He's the source. And, uh, and, and, and it's amazing because you just go from, you just go from one, one, one adjustment right in your heart. I wish you could help people sometimes. Just, it's, just, it's just a decision. You know what? I believed the Word. It's not that I didn't believe it before, but I was trying to figure it out. What's going on? What's going on? And you know, it didn't matter what was going on. I just didn't have joy. That's really the bottom line. It wasn't matter what was going on. What was going on was just a distraction for me looking at who the source was. And how are we going to make it? The same way we've been making it? It's the same way we're always going to be making it? And, it, and, and so it was just distraction. And so you know what? It's amazing. All of a sudden you get happy because you believe the word. And now what's happening? You got joy in your heart. And then you express it. And it begins to work on you. I like that. A cheerful heart makes a quick recovery. We're talking about the most powerful medicine available. This is the, be- this is the best stuff you can get a hold of right here. I'm talking about just being happy. You know, and then you got to, you know, I mean, just situation after situation when you're, you know, personally, when you're, you know, you got to come to a place and, and you got to get a, go, you know, go back to brick laying, you know, and my uncle was a brick contractor and you're trying to start the church and, you know, and, and, and man, you're all excited. You're trying, to, you're trying to keep your faith up, man. And, and you have that first service in your home and your living room and you're trying to be all excited and you're looking out the window and you've got about three people show up. But, you know, hey, it was a start. And, and, but, but all those things, you know, faith, when you believe the word and you believe what God said, how can you be depressed? How can you stay sad? How can you be anxious? If you are, you're, then, you're, then you, haven't, you, haven't, you need to get back in the word and, and really focus on the promises of God and what he said. He's going to put me over. Thanks be to God. He always causes me to triumph. I mean, if you've got to say it over and over, just, just say, always. You know, if the devil says, well, not today, you just say, hey, always. He always causes me to triumph. I'm going, I'm going over. I'm not going under. All right? So, uh, I mean, think about it. this. Is, we're just talking about joy. I'm just trying to get this thought to you about how, how, how important joy is, that it is medicinal. God puts these things in his word so we can understand, hey, uh, you know, if you want to walk healthier, maybe you just need to check up on your joy level. You're staying strong, staying built up. I mean, I mean, this is this is this is free right here. I mean, they got you've seen some of the commercials on there. They got commercials on TV for all different kind of drugs, and and they show you people just you know having fun, having a wonderful time. Their headaches gone, but they, but they gonna have organ failure because it says you know there's 48 different side effects if you take this medication. Everybody's just, ah, fine print, you know. Side, side effects may cause diarrhea and, you know, colon this. And. You know, it's possible in today's world, and, and, and Miss Rita, because she handles a lot of medications, being a nurse and everything, but it's possible for uh, medications to cause problems. Too many medications. Uh, or, or you could say problems induced because of too much medication or wrong people just get loaded up with stuff is that true the wrong stuff i mean you know sometimes the sometimes uh you know if people are on certain things and don't need to people start taking stuff just because oh well they said take this and take this and take this and and uh, you know the main thing is and this is uh remember the word is always first any medication uh that should be supplemental to the word it, it shouldn't, it, the word is not supplemental to the medication. It should be the word first. And I would, I would, uh, I would work on, uh, on taking the least amount of medications as possible and use my faith. Amen. 
I said, you got to use your faith. Are you using your faith, you know? I mean, even if you're popping a, an aspirin or something or ibuprofen or something, say, thank you, Lord, this is, this, is, this is helping what's already happening right now. I've got healing working in my body. Amen. And you're talking to yourself. Amen. I'm not knocking meds, but you're better off without them. I said you're better off without them. I, even, even mental stuff. You know, some stuff's supposed to help you think better. No, God, the, the faith will help you think better. Anyway, hallelujah. The key is you don't want to replace faith in God's medicine with just natural things. All right? God's word's the main thing. We're talking about faith. Uh, you have to, you know, faith and joy, uh, everything's according to people's faith. We, we kind of forget that. Everything's according to people's faith. We don't receive according to what God can do. We receive according to our faith. God can do a lot of things. But we don't receive according to what God can do. We receive, say receive. We receive according to our faith. Let me give you this one and then we'll... Uh, this is the Amplified, Proverbs 17, 22, same, same verse, Amplified says, I like this, a happy heart is good medicine. A happy heart is good medicine, and a cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. I like that, a happy heart. Now, if you just took a little inventory, maybe over the weeks, and you look back, uh, could, you just, could you say, man, I got a happy heart? Or a cheerful mind. Again, that's part of it because really what you've been thinking on, when he says a cheerful mind, man, we've already covered so much of what we're thinking on is going to determine what's happening, what's going on. But, but if you have a cheerful mind, again, that's all connected. Whereas if you're thinking, you know, about you, your problems, you're this, you're that, you're, you know, what I'm saying, without... Praising God and working on the good, thinking on the good things, thinking on the promises. Uh, it's going to affect you. He said a broken spirit dries up the bones. Listen to God's word. God's word translation says, a joyful heart is good medicine. But listen, but depression drains one's strength. Depression. Depression. So that's really all these things. Anxiety, sorrow, depression. What does depression do? It drains your strength. What does joy do? It is your strength. Depression drains your strength. We can't, we can't afford to let anything drain us. Depression, you could say it like this, uh, what I saw. Depression is, is, the, is the environment of death. That's why people start thinking suicidal thoughts when they get depressed and they maintain that depression. It's an environment of death. That means the opposite, joy is an environment for life. Why do you think God dwells in a joyful environment? Because it's life. He is life. There's life. There's joy. Amen? So depression is the environment of death. Joy is the environment of life. So when we're dealing with depression or or whatever's going on, circumstances to walk by faith, you have to resist feelings. We've talked about that recently. You know, not every feeling is true. Not every feeling is real. And so you have to resist feelings, uh, you know, that are contrary to the word. Feelings can be false. And you've got to learn to resist. You don't, you, don't have, you don't have to act on how you feel. You don't have to say everything that you think. <laughs> Amen. And you don't have to act like how you feel. You don't have to act like how you feel. You can, you can feel really bad, but you don't, you, don't, you don't have, you know, there's, I mean, to be honest, I'm, beyond, I'm being honest with you. Um, you can have, you, as a faith person, you can have stuff going on in your body, and your husband and your wife don't even know about it. I'm not saying that you, know, you shouldn't tell them or whatever, but, but I'm talking about you believe in God, you just, you're just, you're, 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 you're exercising your faith or, you know, something that you're working with or dealing with. You know, everybody gets a little ache and pain every once in a while. You know, you move your back wrong or something, you know, and, 
and, and you walk around. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, you, you can milk it, you know, really good. You know, oh, honey, can you get me some milk and cheese? <laughs> or you could go for days and they don't even know. And then something, you know, you sl- it slips out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's been going on for a week. We're just calling it healthy and whole. I just said you don't have to act like how you feel. You can feel real bad. You, you, can, you, can, you know, you can feel like slapping somebody across the room. <laughs> but, that, but, you know, you, you don't act on how you feel. Because you, you, that's where the word comes in. That's, where, that's why the Bible talks about self-control. When you're disciplined and you have self-control and you have love. The, well, you're not, you're not, those things aren't demonstrated because you feel it. And you don't rejoice and decide, I'm going to get happy and have joy because you feel it. It's like, we said it before, you, if, you put on, you know, if you're cold and you put on a coat or something, well, you don't feel it immediately. But when you begin to exercise and put on praise, put on the garment of praise, when you put on love, the Bible says put these things on, that's because it's a choice, and you do it, and it's healing, amen? So we can learn to just take, you know, two or four doses of joy, if you need to, just take some joy, act like, act like the Bible's true, act like it's true, it is true, act like it's true, just say, well, honey, what are we going to do? You said, we're going to act like the Bible's true. <laughs> Honey, we got this bill due next month. What are we going to do? We're going to act like the Bible's true. Call, call those things which be not as though they were paid. God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. You do understand you can quench the spirit, right? In other words, uh, what he's trying to do in you, uh, you can quench, quench. You know, and Paul said, uh, don't quench the spirit. He was talking about, uh, you know, when God's trying to encourage us and uh, with the word or in a service or what's going on, he's trying to get something to us, we can, we can quench that. And he's trying to get joy in the church. And if you're not careful, you can just kind of quench that. Well, but you can make a choice. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to have a cheerful heart. I'm going to act like the word's true. I'm a citizen of heaven. God loves me. I'm the apple of his eye. He supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. And then you can just begin to believe and act on the word and say this situation is going to turn around for my good. He works all things together for good to those that love him, called according to his purpose. He's working in me to will and to work for his good pleasure. I mean, you just go down the list and just get the word, get built up in the word and act on the word, act like it's true. It's easier said than done because you got a real life situation. you got a mountain. you got a giant, whatever it is you want to call it. This, this breathing down your neck or, or you're in the shadow and you just, but you just got to get out from under that shadow and get under the shadow of the Almighty. Start focusing on Him. Amen. Everybody say, i got the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. Let's just lift our hands. Let's just thank Him. Father, we thank You for the joy tonight. Hallelujah. We can just choose joy no matter what's going on. We're just joyful people. We have, we have, a, we have a, a cheerful countenance because we have joy in our hearts. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we just thank you right now. We thank you that joy, hallelujah, you're the power of joy, the power of joy working in us. Hallelujah. You said out of our heart. You said guard your heart for out of it will flow the issues of life. So, Lord, we thank you that that joy in our heart is causing medicine to flow. Hallelujah. That medicine. Come on, just say, let the medicine flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that joy is working in our lungs. That joy is working in our blood. The joy is working in our, in our muscles. Hallelujah. In our joints, and our tendons. We thank you that the power, the life of God is flowing in our bodies right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's just stand up and worship a minute. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can be joyful. We can be glad. Hallelujah. The Bible says be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you tonight that healing is available. 
Hallelujah. We just choose to act on the word. If you're here tonight, I just had it in my heart since we're talking about medicine and healing. If you have something going on in your body, something you've been fighting or dealing with, and you'd like for me to lay hands on you, then come on up here. We're going to lay hands on somebody. Anybody, if you're dealing with anything, just going to be led. It felt like, uh, is anybody needing something tonight? Jesus is the healer. And we believe in the doctrine of laying on of hands in the church. So if you need anything, well, come on up. Hallelujah. Anybody, like, anybody dealing with something in your body? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everybody healthy. Good. I like that. The Bible says if, it, if you're dealing with something. All right. I, we got you. What's up? I'm dealing with that rash. All right. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now that you said, hallelujah, in your word, all things are possible to those who believe. And according to your word, you said in Deuteronomy 28, you mentioned all these things that were listed in the curse of the law. And in Deuteronomy 28 mentions skin diseases and skin irritations and rashes and these things. Well, Father, according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curses every man that hangs on a tree, that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham comes upon the Gentile. So right now, we just lay our hands on Ben, and we receive the blessing right now, and we curse that skin, that skin rash right now, and we command it to go. Skin irritation, we command you to leave. He is redeemed. We curse it, and we command it to wither and dry up and go in Jesus' name. And we thank you that by your stripes, He is healed. Hallelujah. We are the redeemed of the Lord, and we thank you for wisdom, Anything that's causing it that he needs to deal with, we thank you for it, Father. But we know it's dealt with and it's done in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For a restoration. Hallelujah. There's the anointing right there. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. We receive it. Hallelujah. It's so easy for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Clearing it up. Hallelujah. Never coming back in Jesus' name. We curse that. We curse it. Hallelujah, can't stay, can't stay. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Well, glory, hallelujah. Thank you for the joy, Lord. Thank you for the joy. Anybody learn anything about joy? The main thing is that you're doing it. You're acting on uh, what we're talking about. Choosing to rejoice. Hallelujah. In the face of any situation or circumstance. And like Paul said, uh, always. Rejoice in the Lord, always. And again, I say rejoice. Praise the Lord. What you learn something tonight? Well, you can get some medicine flowing. Keep the medicine flowing. All right. Well, hug on somebody before you go tonight. Tell somebody you're glad they came. You can be dismissed.